If you ever paid attention to some multiplayer genres, like digital card games, one of the main issues players often talk about is the randomness in the game and how much it can influence the outcome of a match. The character Faust in Guilty Gear has a special move that spawns random items which help him attack and is key to his basic plan. And yet, this randomness doesn't seem to annoy players nor detract from the game's worth as a competitive test of skill. Why is that? Let's look at how some games handle randomness and see if we can find the difference between good randomness and bad. The role of randomness is to make situations more vague without an obvious best solution. In real-time games, there's no obvious best solution because the best solution depends on what the opponent is going to do next. We can't read minds and we can't react in time to counter the opponent's decisions. We can only pick a solution in advance and witness the results of both our and the opponent's actions as they play out simultaneously. Some turn-based games have both players choose the commands and then see the results, so it's very similar. In strategy games, the decisions take time to unfold, even in real-time titles. To compensate, the fog of war prevents us from seeing what the opponent does and forces us to commit to choices based on what we think the opponent will do. But in many card games, each player takes a turn and fully executes a decision before the other player gets to play. If we could see the opposing player's hand and options, the best choice every turn would be obvious. So in order for the game to function and reward some sort of decision-making skill, cards are hidden from the opponent. But this is not enough as the matches will still be easily solvable with an obvious best option at any point. That's why we also add variation in the form of not having access to all the cards in the deck at all times. This is done to create a large array of situations that are slightly different each time and makes decision making harder and less obvious. It also creates the opportunity for bluffing purposely making suboptimal plays in order to make the opponent think that you don't have access to a key card when you actually do, and vice versa. Fighting games don't need this sort of randomness like card games do. So why is Faust's item throw considered okay? The key is to understand how to implement randomness well, reaching that sweet spot where you enjoy its benefits without the flaws. Two key conditions need to take place. The first key factor is that the result of the randomness occurs at the start, giving both players time to react and maintain control over the outcome. Let's compare two theoretical cards. One does three to six points of damage, and one creates a unit with three to six attack, which will be able to attack next turn. The former is worse for the game since the decision is done before being able to see the result. It amounts to taking a gamble. The latter, on the other hand, is better as both players can see the upcoming result, which will take place later and now have room to make impactful decisions. The randomness is centered around the condition and not in a result that is set in stone. This adds to the variety of possible situations while also giving players the option to adjust their strategy. Faust's item throw works like this. Both players can see which item is being thrown, and both players are given enough time to react and apply decisions based on this new situation. The second key factor is that the variation is carefully tweaked. Faust's items do many different things, and some effects are better than others, both for Faust and the opponent but none of them give Faust a huge advantage or disadvantage since he still has access to all his other great tools as a character. The items create a variety of situations, but they are never game changers. Similarly, the possible variants in card games also need to be tweaked to perfection for the game to work properly. When there is not enough variance, the matches become bland and repetitive. When there's too much variance, 
the matches feel like they are being decided on luck of the draw rather than which player played better this time. While there are other examples of randomness in fighting games, like random damage in Street Fighter 2 and Melty Blood, the bad kind of randomness with no decision making involved, their variance was low enough that it didn't detract from the games. Still, we generally think that it's best to avoid introducing randomness in games that don't inherently need it, and if it is introduced, it should be done with great care, like Faust's item throw. What do you think about randomness in both fighting games and other genres? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.